Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. We're out for a drive today because, well, frankly, I need to get out of the house. Get away from the chains on the trees. So, here's the thing. I, I come out of one blackout to realize I'm in another. I finally get somewhere where I have enough Internet connection to scroll, and I find out that Facebook and Twitter has gone through and censored a bunch of outlets, a bunch of news outlets. Um... Now, they're all independent. None of them are owned by massive corporations. And they all share one thing in common. They're uh, opposed to government policies. And, and that's terrifying. That is terrifying. You know, people are trying to make the connection to Alex Jones. And it's like, well, you know, it wasn't a problem when, when they did it to Alex Jones. You're right, it wasn't. Alex Jones kind of advocated for people to be burned to death because of their sexual orientation. Alex Jones talked about hybrid fish men. Alex Jones is a con artist. These outlets are uh, news outlets for the most part. Uh, some are sensationalist, some are garbage, uh, but some are real outlets. Even the sensationalist ones are, are filling a purpose. There are a lot of people who won't realize there's a problem until they see some crazy headline. And there are some that do that. Now, before we get too, for, too much further into this, I do, in the interest of full disclosure, I need to point out that I know a lot of these people. I know a lot of the editors and the reporters that work at these places. Um, Nick Burnaby over at Anti-Media, we're friends. And I don't mean like, oh, we're, we're, we've talked on Facebook. I mean, like, we've got drunk in a casino together. We're friends. Uh, at the same time, uh, Jason over at Free Thought Project, well, we're not friends. <laughs> um, we've actually had some semi-public disagreements over his presentation because it is a little sensationalist. But at the same time, it's filling a role that some people really need. And when they start shutting down dissent on that level, 800 pages in one day on Facebook and Twitter, uh, that's that's insane. That is insane. Um, now, one journalist that I would actually suggest everybody follow, uh, she is she's a friend of mine and she's really good. It, her name's Carrie Wedler. Not only was her outlet caught up in it, but her personal Twitter account got banned. And this was all in one day. And Facebook gave, basically said that they engaged in spam, which they don't. Um, they share each other's work, and I, maybe it kind of looks systematic to a, to a computer. But, no, they're, they're not spam. They don't share anything that isn't from, you know, isn't news-oriented, that isn't what the people signed up for. Now, I should also point out that the outlets that I work with didn't get caught up in this. Um, none of them did. They, they didn't, uh, none of them got banned. So this isn't me saying, you know, bringing this up because I was personally affected by it. Um, the Fifth Column, Pontiac Tribune, Greed, none of them got hit. It, it all it all focused on these other outlets, but it, it, it's chilling to me because we're an independent network, and this very easily could have been us. You could have got on, and I'd be gone. Um, and it, it's kind of terrifying. Now, the two things you need to take away from this is first and foremost, don't compare them to Alex Jones. E even the worst among them wasn't that level not even close so don't let that comparison happen and don't make that comparison you know there's some people that are out there going well you know you should have supported this and you should have spoke up when it was alex jones no no alex jones was calling for innocent people to be killed um, no he, he can be censored simply disagreeing with government policy is a whole other issue and that's what these outlets did that was their offense the other thing you need to take away from this is that Facebook and Twitter are no longer free discussion platforms. You know, there were always reasonable limits, you know, on what, what could be said on either outlet. And, and I understand that they're private companies. They can do what they want. But now they've hit a point where they're trying to alter public discourse. And it appears that this was done at the request of the government. 
Now Facebook is a private company and they can do as they wish. But this is one step. This is one step short of an actual First Amendment violation, a massive one, a coordinated one, specifically targeting outlets that speak out against government abuses. One of these outlets, all they do is report on police misconduct. That's it. One of them is kind of a marijuana advocacy thing. Um, and then a lot of them talk about foreign policy. And, you know, they, they break stories related to government involvement in in the Mideast and in Africa. And, and, and a lot of times, it's the only place you can get that information. So you need to be looking for another social media network. You need to be getting ready to move. You know, it happened with MySpace. Everybody just left. It's going to happen with Facebook. Because this type of censorship, once it starts, it doesn't stop. And yeah, Free Thought Project, it's sensationalist. It is. But it's no more sensationalist than Fox News or CNN. Um, so, be ready. Look, I know that some of these outlets are setting up on places called Steam It. There, there's a website called Steam It, which is a little weird to me, to be honest. Um, I've, I've checked it out. It's a little odd. Um, and then there's one called MeWe, which is very similar to Facebook. That's where they're going. And that's where you're going to have to find their information. Um, because now it's not going to be on Facebook. You're going to have to find it there and then share it to Facebook. Now... This isn't a small thing when we're talking about it. We're talking about tens of millions of subscribers that were simply taken off the rolls by Facebook. Uh, I know Antimedia had, I want to say, 2.7 million subscribers, that one channel. And you can go to their website. I mean, they post, you know, they have a kind of, I don't want to say clickbait, um, they have uh, very bold headlines, and but the reporting is pretty good. The reporting's good. It's accurate, and it's linked, which is nice. I mean, that's something you don't find on Fox News or CNN. When they make a claim about some study or some statistic, they've linked to it. It's there. You can click it and read it yourself. I mean, that's better fact-checking and better, uh, better accountability than you find on major networks. And again... These were all independent outlets, and none of them are corporate run, and they all spoke out against the government, and now they're all gone. You can't find them on Facebook. You can't find them on Twitter. So get ready to move, and because this is kind of going to be the end. This is going to be the end of free discussion and free discourse on Facebook. So anyway, just a thought, and uh, y'all have a nice day. Get out and get some fresh air.